Hello to all my friends out there. And so I finally got one of these. I will buy a few. These are nice. I pray for all my followers. Okay, so the videos I do are Practical Prepper. And the reason I call them Practical Prepper is because my stuff is practical. Nothing crazy. And this video is what do I expect? What do I expect is going to happen in the near future? And I wasn't planning on doing this video. I got to one, one comment today, and it was Florence Nightingale, and it was really a good comment. And so I decided to do this video, Practical Prepper, What Do I Personally Expect? Number one. I expect an increase in price of food and cost of living. That's what I expect. So uh, then the next thing you want to say is, okay, what will I do? Well, what I do is I pull the wagon train in tighter. That means I start gathering all my um, assets from every corner in tight, in secure, it secure everything everything and I have been working I've been working on this for a few weeks a few weeks you guys and you know what I noticed there's very little activity on the prepper channels this week you know what I think I think they're all doing what I'm doing I'm thinking they're securing everything they're getting everything tight to secure that's one uh you know uh, one thing that makes us so strong is our citizens Okay, so you want to stockpile your food. And what you want to do is you want to secure all your food, every last little bite. You want to go through your cupboards, go through your kitchen. And you don't have to actually pack it up, but have it in your kitchen so you could pack it up and get out if you had to evacuate. That's part of being prepared. Be being prepared for the worst. Not just being prepared for the worst, but being prepared for the cost of gas going up being prepared for the cost of food going up, making sure you don't run out of food. So you want to stockpile food and you want to first secure all the food that is in your house. And then if you have food and goods that you don't really need, donate those to places where people who really are in need um, can uh, have it. You know, to strengthen up your community a little bit. Uh, this last week, I gave some of my food that was dented cans and various food I had bought to um, a guy, a homeless guy. And so what I'm going to start doing is when I go through my food, if I see things that I know I'm not going to be getting around to eating, I'm going to pack up boxes and prepare to give that stuff away if needs be. Otherwise, uh, to the food bank, the one food bank where I took my uh, friend, uh, and, and they said, I said, well, I don't need food. They go, that's okay. You can have as much food as you want. So um, that's where I'm going to donate my coats and my clothes. It's cold here today. You know, it'd be awful if you didn't have a coat. Okay, I've been cleaning my, preparing, cleaning my bathrooms, and it takes you a while to get your bathrooms clean enough to keep your water in there. I mean, depending on how spotlessly clean you are, but I never really thought about drinking water, how bad that would be if your bathroom wasn't clean enough. So you want to get your bathroom super clean so you can fill your tub with water, and you want to get some containers, whatever you have, some big trash cans so that you can fill them with water as quick as you can if something happens. Another thing, you know, uh, TJ Prepper, their water went out and she said make sure your laundry is done. You know, if the water goes out and you don't have your, uh, you don't have your laundry done, you know, don't be letting your laundry pile up. I'm guilty of that one. So you want to secure your water. You want to store as much water as you can, but if something was to happen, you want to make sure you, you know, and there's water in your uh, hot water heater. Prepare for uh, power outages. 
um, you know, the main thing uh, for power outages would be um, light and heat. Um, you know, if you live in really cold areas, I guess those buddy heaters are good. I don't have one. And, and barbecues, little hibachis, but those require um, briquettes, so make sure you have those. So you want to prepare for uh, power outages. You want to prepare for gas shortages. I've been through, you know, one thing that could happen with these Mideast uh, disputes is uh, the gas, we could have gas shortages. Expect an attack. Okay, um, what our enemies inside the country and out like to do is small attacks. Okay, I was telling my son, we had the synagogue, synagogue attacked here. It doesn't matter who attacked it. It's just, it matters that at the synagogue here in San Diego was attacked. And it was a senseless attack, but but there's there's um, reason behind these attacks, and if you think about it, you um, you'll probably be able to um, think of several attacks: the Boston Marathon, 9/11, uh, the Colorado movie theater. So expect attacks. The Las Vegas attack. You know, prepare for attacks. So how can you prepare for an attack? Well, you can be hyper vigilant. You can keep your eye out for anything odd and, and report it. Um, I worked in an Iraq uh, shop and we had a briefcase left and, and my boss said, call the police. I'm very um, uncomfortable. And so I called the police right away and they didn't come. And, 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 you know, it was starting to get busy, and I moved the briefcase, and, and you know, my boss was uh, horrified. He goes, you, you uh, moved it? And I go, well, yeah, because if it's here in the middle of everything, and I thought possibly if it was a bomb, it was on a timer, and so I actually moved it, and, and believe it, a woman came out. You know, I see her around town once in a while, and I go, man, I cannot believe you opened that. Anyway, so um, prepare for an attack. I mean, don't be shocked out of your mind if we're attacked. Oh, what they like to do is they like to shoot our uh, troops in the legs. You know, it's like psychological warfare. It pisses me off. Oh, in San Diego, you know, you'll see it a lot of amputees. Expect attacks. Okay, hoard as much money as you can. Well, how can you hoard money? Well, what you want to do is you want to just cut all spending. And that is easier to do if you don't have to keep buying things, if you can just pay your rent. And and I heard one uh, lady, what she did is when it was cold, she would just go into her bedroom and just heat her bedroom with a small heater. You know, do whatever you can to hoard as much money as you can to earn money if you can. So you want to hoard your money, hang on to your money, suspend spending. That's things you can do. Okay, prepare your car to evacuate. I've been working on this one, and believe it or not, you know, depending on what kind of person you are, uh, I was a workaholic, and so, like, everything was left undone all the time. Make sure your car is well-maintained. Make sure your car is full of gas. And make sure that if you had to, you could live in your car somehow. Because you might have to just to run for your life, depending on what happens. And then the last thing is be hyper-vigilant. Uh, every little thing, you know, if, if um, you know, just any little thing that could indicate things are not going well, like, okay, the floods. We haven't heard the last of these floods. I don't believe, like, it's icy cold here, and I heard in um, the northern regions of the, the country, it was like um, Antarctica, frozen cold. And so what would I expect? I would expect the um, I would expect the snow to melt and then I would expect water and then I would expect floods. Also, I would expect uh, 
tornadoes. I heard those might be coming because of the, the cold and the heat hitting and causing tornadoes. I would expect tornadoes. If I lived in a place, I would expect here two things, earthquake and fire. Those are the two things. And I would expect some kind of an attack because we're a Navy, ta Navy town. You know, I wouldn't, if we were attacked, I wouldn't be shocked out of my mind. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. But depending on the area you live in, you know what's likely to happen if you're likely to have floods, if you're likely to have unemployment. I would expect, um, I would expect increased unemployment. Because, okay, say if the um, average citizen is pulling their uh, resources in tight, what do you see all over? You see businesses closing down. You see the malls going down because they're pulling their uh, resources in tight. So just be aware. Um, the main thing that you can really do to help yourself is stockpile food because then you wouldn't have to buy any. And if you have extra food, take it to the food banks. Um, right now here in San Diego, we seem to have food that's easily available. And so if you don't have very much food, um, you know, I try to get my friend to go to the food banks. And, and honestly, I can see why she didn't want to. Um, it was a few months ago. If she had continued, uh, her house would be packed full of food and she wouldn't have had a worry for nothing. You know what I'm saying? But you have to be a little bit of a forward thinking person. Um, I noticed the preppers, uh, I watched the videos at night. I noticed they're not messing around. They're preparing. They have weapons. They have food. They have dogs. They have secure houses. They have networks. And I would suggest watching those uh, prepper videos. They're very, very helpful. You know, just that one suggestion of keeping your laundry done up. You know, and if you don't have much money, I did hear a good one. You can wash your clothes in the bathtub. You can do that. And, you know, save your dollar and buy. Okay, so if you save your dollar, why should you save a dollar? This was 50 cents. Find a way to save every single dollar you can to earn an extra dollar. Okay, you guys. God bless you all.